Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Andy Ockershausen, and this is Our Town. We are very, very fortunate and grateful to have a very, very good friend of mine to be our guest. Jim Denegar is the president and the CEO of the Greater Washington Board of Trade and a man that has made such an imprint on this city. And Jim, welcome to our town. And as I keep telling you, our town is more than downtown. I refuse to call it my town, it's our town. And you're a big part of it. Well, thanks for having me, Andy. It's, it's great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. Looking forward to hearing the questions. We have our fingers crossed and our, and our the eyes dotted that this thing is going to work. But I didn't know what <laughs> podcasting was, but now I found out it's broadcasting where you don't need a radio. That's what I tell people. You can get it on your cell phone. You get it everywhere. But, Jim, I met uh, oh, 10 years ago, and I can't believe it's been 10 years, Jim. It's since moved you took quickly. over the Board of Trade. really has moved quickly. But 10 years ago, I met you, and we, we signed up when I came on board at the Board of Trade, and I was pleased to hear about how passionate people were about the business community and supporting their town. Well, you know, I, I can't. I am stunned that everybody doesn't feel that way about our town as supporting the Board of Trade. And you know they all don't, but this is the group that makes it go. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to be involved in it for 40 years, and I know what it does, and I know what you have brought to the Board of Trade. I met you the first night when, I forget, we came to a cocktail party somewhere out in the suburbs. Right. And who brought you but... Uh, Sam Schreiber. Sam uh, brought sure. you, and we met for the first time. And I said, who is this guy? What is his story? And this, the rest is history. <laughs> you have made such an imprint on the Board of Trade. Well, we've got some very passionate members, very connected members, and I think very well-respected members, all in a collaborative atmosphere, working with the Chambers of Commerce, the other business organizations, Federal City Council. There are lots of different groups, but really one on the regional side of things, Board of Trade for almost 130 years now it's been around. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I remember the 100th anniversary, seems like yesterday, 30 years ago. Ah, please protect us. But why did you... You were you were not born in D.C., correct? Well, I grew up in Bayside, Queens, New York, and, know it uh, well. and then left from there to go to college down here at Catholic University, and and loved it here. I actually visited Washington with a group called Close Up, and Close Up took high school kids from around the country, brought them down to Washington to see how government works over the span of a week. And I, I have to say, the first time I set foot in Washington, I was enamored. I just I fell in love with the with the stature of the place, with the history of the place, but really with uh, the fact that there was at that point now this is back in the in the late 70s there was one thing going on and it was government we're so much more than that now but back then one thing going on i figured all right new york <laughs> you had the financial district the theater district the jewelry district the fashion district down here there was pretty much one thing and i could concentrate on that and did and that's what i studied at catholic u at politics and history and decided to stay doing some government affairs with a group called the independent insurance agents but Bayside is in Queens, correct? It is. Is that close outside, to Flushing? Very close. I just saw something about Flushing, which reminds me. We rode through one time. I thought I was riding through downtown Seoul, Korea. Well, they actually very... passed an ordinance that the signage had to be in two languages, <laughs> one of them being English. So it was. It was a. It's a in very, very diverse place. But and it's great. It's great living for the people there. It brings a lot to the table. Now, as a good Baysider, I'll tell you the comment about Flushing. When people say, "What do you think of Flushing, New York?" People say, "I'm all for it." <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. And Jackson Heights and all the places that we know about. Um, all right, Donald Trump's put Jackson Heights on the map, I guess, or maybe Jamaica <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Whatever it were. But you did love school. And Catholic University is such a wonderful institution. And we talked about, what was, it? was the father's, the priest's name that was head of it? He was a Jesuit. It was Curly or Hurley or... Uh, Bur well, there was, uh, Walton was the one that I'm, I'm thinking of. I'm going to have to track that down and find out who it, it was. Yeah. And of course, Father Hartke we've spoken about. Right. A great teacher. Oh, my goodness. A force World of personality, class. could raise big money, did tremendous jobs as it relates to performing arts. The, the current mayor of New Orleans, the current mayor, Mitch Landrew, studied theater, but also studied politics at Catholic University. Is that we right? were contemporary classmates. Uh, um, Ed Gillespie, uh, probably a candidate for governor, he went to school at Catholic University with me. The governor of Virginia, Harry <laughs> McAuliffe, went to Catholic University. and. <laughs> Really funny, at one point, they were both 
the heads of the respective parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, Ed and and Terry, and, Terry, and right. it was They're astounding when Father fundraisers. and Father O'Connell, now Monsignor O'Connell, but Father O'Connell held a, a heck of a, a a debate. I'll call it up at uh, well. Our Catholic producer View. points out Kathleen Turner was a graduate of Catholic University. Kathleen yeah. Turner, I think Great John actors. Voigt, Susan <clears throat> Sarandon, number of others. Yeah, and Jim Denegar. Oh, and Don't Jim Denegar. Yeah. <laughs> but I grew up in Washington, Northeast Washington. I knew Ch- Catholic University used to be a football power, if anybody would believe that bowl game. They went to the. I think they went to the Orange Bowl. Uh, well, sure, yes, I mean, and it, it helped major, to have major. wars going on during the time when everybody else was at war. So you know, you're the last person standing. But, but see, yes, the Orange great. Bowl. That's right. But th- that education was very important to where you are now. The education was tremendous, but the opportunities, the people I met, the exposure to Greater Washington made it much more comfortable for me to stay here. I knew Metro. I knew Georgetown. I knew the the area. I knew my way around Capitol Hill. Very important. I worked in, and uh, I was an usher at Ford's Theater to pay my way through college. I, I worked <laughs> at different restaurants. In Old Town Alexandria, I worked for a summer. So there were... There were tremendous opportunities to work your way through college here. Well, you knew about the city from the ground up, which is which obviously made you very, very available to a great firm like the uh, Association of Architects. That was the first time I knew about you. That was 77,000 members, correct? That's a big group, a very good group, very passionate also of the membership. I mean, they love design and the attention to quality and to detail there's there's i've never met a more passionate group of members than at the american institute of architects and the staff right along with them would work and and work right through the the most difficult times when the uh, hurricane katrina happened to help relocate the architects that were displaced in new orleans the american institute of architects stood tall to help them after 9 11 to help the new york architects and the city of new york in a supporting role not the lead role that was really the aia in new york i have to say it's a it's the i think the perfect example of a national organization that supports its chapters they really went to work. It really rolled up their sleeves. Well, and it's been at 18th and, and New York Avenue for years and years and years right there at the Octagon Museum. But because it's kind of in the heart of the federal presence of the government buildings that roll up the sidewalks at 6 o'clock, it's, <laughs> it's not particularly well known. But it's well, a great place. Well, I had heard about it because of some local architects that were involved with the Board of Trade. They were also effective with that, that group. But that gave you some understanding of not only the city, but where we are and what we're doing, but but growing up here because you matured here. So when the opportunity came, and they had a knock on your door, I know that, to, to, for the Board of Trade, that must have been a shocker to you that you'd get that opportunity. Well, everything to that point uh, in terms of my career was working for national organizations, the American Society of Association Executives, that association of associations. ASAE, is yep. that it? the independent insurance agents, the Building Owners and Managers Association, the American Institute of Architects, all national groups. So there's a lot of travel, a lot of travel. Yeah, you were traveling quite and, a bit. And for the most part, my world wasn't the District Chamber of Commerce or it wasn't the Northern Virginia Chamber or it wasn't bank presidents. Candidly, I, I wasn't familiar with the business of Greater Washington. I was familiar with the airports pretty well. And then Capitol Hill and the association world mostly national. So the opportunity for the Board of Trade was several fold. It was uh, you could stay and, and live and work here to represent the place where you chose to live and work and raise your family. And for me, that was catnip. That was that was too good to even pass up the lack of travel. There's still plenty, but it's all around the Beltway, not to <laughs> different cities around the world. But you still know the airports. But you still know the airports, but as a business opportunity. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And our airports are so important to us, and you were in and out of them, but but then you got involved with the Board of Trade as a group, but then you got involved with the people, and the people make the Board of Trade go. I, I don't have to tell you that. Um, I know that they ran the city for years. I don't mean literally ran it, but enormous influence, and I think you brought that back, Jim. In a lot of ways, the last 10 years have shown me the influence has grown because of your high profile. Well, I, you know, that's a, a two-edged sword. 
because the Board of Trade is not me, but I work for and support the Board of Trade, I like to think of myself as a facilitator that can help convene people, facilitate the discussions, and then help get things done. But the power of the Board of Trade is really within the membership, those bank presidents and managing partners of law firms and the dedicated people out of the public relations firms and advertising and marketing. And, you know, we brought a group down to the Washington Post to not only visit their new headquarters, but the Washington Post wanted to meet them and they wanted to meet the Washington Post. If we can do that through the Board of Trade or hire unemployed individuals with people who are looking to hire people, it's a nice role for the Board of Trade. Cybersecurity, the transportation initiatives, if we can bring resources to bear to help Paul Wiedefeld and the team at Metro, that's the role of the Board of Trade and it's in good support of the good work that Paul's doing. So, yep, left the breakfast this morning with the chief of police. We love her. We're going to miss her. She's oh, yeah. done a tremendous was job. Was her replacement there? Her replacement, her her interim replacement was there, and we certainly hope they'll do a He's been around for years, internally. I know. Yeah. No, He's but, not unknown. But that, that relationship with the law enforcement community, or we'll bring together the chancellor of the schools of the district plus the, the superintendents around the region, and we've done that for about five or six years now. It, it is to convene the different groups, it is to get them all together, and then where there are opportunities for the Board of Trade to be helpful, it's not our town. It's all of our town, not just the business community. Absolutely. But if we can do good things that help the rest of the community, that's that's an important role. Well, we were going to, we, Kathy Lanier, who's a friend, and we've known for years, and I think she's delightful. She was on our list for future, but we've lost her. <laughs> but we, we will gain the new chief. She can speak more freely now. You might want to still get her. <laughs> she, I think she's been terrific. Well, we're going to take a break now. We're talking to Jim Denegar, president of the Greater Washington Board of Trade. And this is Our Town, and we'll be right back. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our wonderful restaurants at Washington Harbor. Tony and Joe's, the best seafood in the city. Nick's Riverside Grill, wonderful chops and steaks. Wonderful views of the Kennedy Center, Roosevelt Island, the Roslyn skyline. Spectacular. Two bars outside, right on the water. Fabulous food. For dinner reservations, call 202-944-4545. It's really a great experience. We'll see you down at Tony and Joe's or Nick's Riverside Grill. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Andy Ockershausen again, and this is Our Town, and we're talking with Jim Denegar, President and CEO of the Greater Washington Board of Trade. And Jim, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the board before we get into the total business community. You have made an enormous impact. You have changed the board, and I, I say that with all sincerity, which it had to be. You brought it into the, what is it, the 21st century. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think that there was opportunity to make it in, in, in sort of incredibly more relevant because of how important the greater Washington region is. It needed a business community that was focused on the region in support of and in collaboration with all the other business organizations. I think for a period of time, the Board of Trade competed with those organizations instead right. of collaborated, and I think we're stronger together. Um, so that, with the great leadership of our board and executive committee, has helped set the direction. And, and it's always been my uh, career understanding that the board steers and the staff rows. And candidly, we have a tremendous staff. We row very hard. Um, I am overwhelmed with how great those kids work. I call them all kids because, to me, they are. I've been around so long that they're still alive. And it's incredible what work they do. And, and you don't do it with a lot of people. That's what I'm amazed about. Uh, really hardworking staff, incredibly dedicated. And, and boy, they are, they are uh, committed to a good customer service experience and quality. What do they say? The customer is always right, number one. <laughs> number two says, see, number one. And that, your people do that. They're just great. Now, I want to ask you the changes that you've seen in your years since CU and the 10 years of Board of Trade. But I am every day boggled by what's happening to our town. And that goes for the suburbs and everything. Well, it's you just know, exploded. Well, when you look at this place, people choose to live here. They, I was asked the other day about people who would leave after the inauguration. I don't see that too often. It's not <laughs> it like happen anymore. It's not like Chicago should be expecting a big influx of people. Even the president and his wife are going to stay here <laughs> for a period of time. 
But I, what I what I have seen over the years is that the sort of smaller town feel of Washington and and Roslyn and Bethesda are becoming more of a big, powerful region. And and it's no longer Riggs Bank; it's PNC, and it's no longer Woody's and Hex; it's Macy's. I, I get it. So maybe those smaller town companies and the family-owned places and all the rest have have changed out to be some bigger companies. But at the same time. We're not only home to Marriott, we're home to Hilton and Choice and Ritz and we're the hospitality capital of the world or we still have National Geographic, but now we have Discovery and we have Gannett and we have a, a re-emerging very strong and if you haven't seen it lately, it's hard to believe how strong the Washington Post has become. They've hired over 200 more people in the past couple of years. And so I, I think we are a force to be reckoned with. We are a world leader, a world capital, but too often we don't play that way and, and we don't sort of think of ourselves that way. We, we can't live with a metro system that's hobbling along. We need to have the best metro system. You can't, you can't an sort of go along with, with infrastructure challenges that we have. We need a quality of life that supports the people who choose to live here. Jim, look, it happens to me so many times over the years because we are Washington, D.C. I have friends that live in Lincoln, Nebraska, or Walla Walla, Washington. They know that Marion Barry was an embarrassment. How do they know that? Because we are a national interest to everybody. And I'm glad to see that that our, our government now looks very, very bright to me. Sure does. Over the years. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry Kathy Lanier is leaving. Mm -hmm. we'll she miss was her, a great she, image around the country. But happy to have her here. There's she a big, did a good great looking job. blonde to run the police force. Now Wonderful. you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> I told her she should be in the movies. You know, she's very attractive, very smart, and I'm sorry to lose her in New York. But Jim, what I see downtown, and and in the downtown to me, and you mentioned it, is I saw the building yesterday out in Fairfax. I couldn't believe what's changed. Every time I go to Arlington, there's another high rise. Every time I'm in Bethesda or or out to Rockville, the road system has changed. There's twice as many cars as there was. And we're such a huge cosmopolitan area. Well, and it will be bigger and bigger, but it will be connected. So what I expect in the next 10 years or less is to look at us as a mega region where you're looking at Dulles and Tysons, Washington and Bethesda, Silver Spring, Columbia, up to and including Baltimore. I have to say that more opportunity exists in Prince George's County than people imagine. More opportunity exists with Baltimore partly because of cybersecurity, partly because of the big port, partly because their strengths are our weaknesses and vice versa. Vice versa, I agree. Um, but people considered Baltimore a foreign destination if you're a Washingtonian. <laughs> and I have to say, it's it's nothing of the sort. It is a yin to our yang. Fabulous city. Well, the Baltimore people used to resent coming to Washington. I think that's changed over the years. But Jim, what do you see about um, the, the wharf? That to me is a $2 billion project that I can't believe what we're doing to our town. You know, Arena Stage was kind of the best kept secret in town for years so and years and years. you had a party there, years. I'll admit that. But, but I, thank you, we did. We were there for the opening before the opening. But I, I will say that the, the Arena Stage was a place where locals would go. Now, the cool thing about Arena Stage was that it was an integrated theater before any other place in Washington, D.C., and it was, their, it was their mark within the community. It has been a community, not so theater, but a community supporter and a galvanizer. And the reason I hit on Arena Stage is because the wharf will make Arena Stage even more successful, more known to people who maybe are coming in from Bethesda or maybe they're coming in from Pittsburgh but they choose to live or or dine down at the wharf and that's kind of the highlight but wow look at arena stage it's a jewel so it's no longer just the fish lander it's the arena stage that's going to be on maps that haven't been Fabulous looked at in the past you know our friend uh, mill peterson the local guy hometown He's done things in National Harbor, which are fabulous. Mill Peterson's a visionary, and, and so is Ted Lerner. And I have to say, <laughs> when you look at some of the individuals, I had the opportunity, because of the Board of Trade, to go to opening day when the stadium opened. And I'm in the, the party at the Lerner building over at 20th and M, and I'm talking to one of Mr. Lerner's partners. And he said, you know, we bought this spot in 1978. <laughs> I said, it's 1978? <laughs> what did you see? This wasn't for the stadium. This was for the building. I said, what did you see in 78? He said, we'd always be less than a half mile from the U.S. Capitol. 
that's that's vision. That's and when you look at Tyson's with the likes of Till Hazel and Sid Dewberry and, and certainly Bob Linos up in Maryland in the oh development, gosh. these were visionaries of individuals and Bud Doggett and the work he did not only in the district, but his friendship and, and competition with the names I just mentioned. I have to say that that these were people who saw the future, the future's here, and it looks brighter and brighter every day. They never tried to leave, you're right. And what I see about, about Mill Peterson, what he has done, he's made that a destination. I think the wharf's gonna be a destination, and yet we're not in competition with Mill Peterson. He's part of our town. Oh, absolutely. And well, I have to done. say that MGM is going to astound people when it opens up. I was down there recently for a place called Local Motors. They print 3D printing of automobiles. It's, it's oh, who oh, the oh. heck would ever think you'd you'd print an automobile, but they're <laughs> doing it down at National Harbor. So it's restaurants, it's, it's condos, it's sailing. It's, you know, I think that we're going to see a water taxi system that really hums along. That works. I think we may look at some hydrofoils or some of the, the hovercraft. I think that we'll make better use of the Potomac River, not as just a commuting pattern, but as the ability for everybody to enjoy it. Well, I think it'll relieve a lot of traffic congestion really if could. it's done right. Because what is happening, and you, you know, we know the people real well from AAA and work with them on several boards, and what's happened to traffic, it's not that the road system is, is wrong, it's that there's so much volume now. Well, it may, it's not wrong, but I will say, and, and you're talking exactly about our town, our town not so long ago, and certainly when I arrived back in the mid 70s, it was a hub and spokes. Everybody was coming into Washington, everybody was leaving, coming in, leaving, that's rush hour. Today, it's a hub. But Silver Springs a hub, Bethesda's a hub, so certainly Tyson's is now Fairfax a City. hub. And so when you look at where people are going, they're not just coming from the suburbs into the district, they're coming from the suburbs to another suburb, or they're coming from the district out to Tyson's. And so the, the infrastructure that we have has been a pipeline into the district, but we really do need to revisit where these pipelines go. It is it is unconscionable that you can drive in from Georgetown and once you cross over towards the Four Seasons, M Street comes at you one way, the wrong way for rush hour in the morning. What What's going on? Let's start to rethink about where patterns, we use some patterns. of the patterns. Exactly. The timing and synchronization of lights. You know, if I had a bucket list, it would be for That's a what handful I want to know. of things. What is your bucket list? It, it would be that we time and synchronize the lights region wide, not just Arlington, not just Bethesda, but for the region so that you can get from here to there in a predictable period of time. I think it's, it's ridiculous that I can take a, a cab in from Dulles Airport, drop me at the JW Marriott, but that person can't take a passenger back out to Dulles. It's, it's empty. That's kind of ridiculous. It's not particularly green, but it signifies that we're not a region as much as we're two states in the district. And I'll add one other that's much more serious than the cabs. It's the ability of getting off of the mark train and then having to transfer through the red line at Union Station and then work your way out to LaFont Plaza, Crystal City, and Old Town, or that you would be able to just get on the mark trains and go through the VRE lines that take you to LaFont, take you to, yeah, right, to right, right, right into Old Town, town. town, and that the VRE should be able to take me into Maryland. They both stop at Union Station. It's ridiculous. Now, I understand why, and the Long Bridge needs to be replaced, and there's some infrastructure work that has to happen, but more and more will be better if we operate and act like a region instead of two states and the district. Amen. And, and Jim, when I think about the railroad, people are stunned to know that we have a railroad run right through our city. Right through the city. <laughs> the capital city of the world, and it's always going to be there. They'll notice it's a it, lifeline. They'll notice it sooner when you're looking at the, the uh, railroad where you've got the cargo because they'll be double stacking it because they've now widened and deepened the Virginia Avenue Tunnel. So you're going to see some pretty big cargo coming through, and it'll be coming across that long bridge. Well, well we have enabled ourselves to be a... Uh, a destination in so many ways and we've got to keep that up and we're gonna be right back Jim we're gonna take a break now and um, we'll be back with uh, Jim Denegar and the great things he's talking to and I want to know his personal bucket list when we return to our town are you retired or soon will be is your will up to date don't want to leave a mess for your family to clean up I'm attorney Mike Collins the guy who sends you those invitations to my estate planning seminar I'll teach you how to save taxes, avoid probate, protect your heirs from lawsuits, bankruptcy, even the divorce court. Keep your money and your family with our innovative Reservoir Trust. 
Watch the mail for your invitation. Tuition's free when you register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Andy Ockershausen. We're on uh, Our Town discussing our beautiful capital city of the world with Jim Denegar. And I was trying to tell the, my wife the story, but she was with me. We were in Ivy City last week. A lot of people don't know about Ivy City. I know you do. The Heck Company Warehouse, the condos. I mean, that is that is a growth area, I guarantee you. That used to be the end of the world, the pits. Well, it's a place where they park school buses and have some cargo containers. But then Doug Jamal came in, who's a real visionary in the oh, district, boy. and said, I see some opportunity here. And, and he, you know, he had to go through a couple of different iterations, but I think he's hit it. And so as you look at... H Street and the not streetcar, but H Street because it's becoming more and more and more of a destination, not just late night, but throughout the day. There's something going on around here, and it's not just the number of people moving into the district that have to find a place to live, play, and work. But beyond that, it's a chosen destination. People are coming in from all over the place to go visit the wharf or to go down to National Harbor or to go to the mall. It's not just the museums, but you know, let me just add, when, when people start to realize about what's going to go on with the African American History Museum or the opportunities with the Spy Museum or the National Bible Museum, a half a million square feet, it will be bigger than those other two museums. I have to say, we're going to be looking at more and more people coming to visit here for reasons in the past that they used to come and take their pictures at the Lincoln Memorial, and they still will, but there's and an the enormous amount more going on in greater Washington than just that. Well, it, it is, and, and I love it. I love what's happening. I love what uh, Ackridge is trying to do at the mall. The mall is such an important part of you know, He's doing it. Image. God bless him and the <laughs> and the people who've supported it. The mall is now a, a not an embarrassment of patchwork of of dirt and grass. It is coming along very well. Lie. And not only that, it'll be sustainable because they put the right grain, drainage systems in there. Uh, there are grandiose plans for parking underneath, and that may take a yeah, yeoman's task to do that. But I do have to say that, you know, you need good bathrooms on the mall. You need a good mall that shouldn't be damaged by all the protests and the concerts and all the rest. Let's let's keep it as a showpiece. And then I think that what, uh, what Chip and the team over at Ackridge are doing with the plans for Union Station oh to take God. over the air rights will connect a part of Northeast and Northwest that are disconnected because of the because of the trains. Right in the middle of the train. Right in the track. middle. Well, listen. Before we get too far away from the from you, what is on the Jim Denegar bucket list? <laughs> uh, you know, every day is different for me. I'm going to China in a, about a two weeks and have been over there a few times to see On some tremendous opportunities. Yeah, we take a group over to familiarize them with China so that we can sit down with the people who run their airports or their metro system or high-speed rail. Uh, I just got back from two weeks of vacation in Italy. It was fascinating, and everything's fascinating. The food, the sky, the water, the, the people, the culture, the history. And so it, it, every day at the Board of Trade and every day opportunity I have within the most right. uh, important but also one of the most remarkable regions of the world, there's, there's not some bucket list I need to dive out of a plane <laughs> or things like that. There's not enough hours in the day to do the things you don't worry, that, that my, you're a good, my kids yeah. and I like to do, but it's, it's a wonderful place to do that. It's it's a wonderful place to raise a family. It's a wonderful place to have friends and go out and enjoy all the largest that this that this region offers. And to the extent that that I know people and they know me, it makes it a very small town. And well, you're and the that's image, cool Jim. Thing. You're stuck with it, and, <laughs> and you work at it, and it works. Well, I'll, I'll quickly interject that. Uh, <laughs> that I, I do get to work for the Board of Trade. It's not me and I'm not it, that. but I'd I know. like to work in You're support still of the it. image, <laughs> and I think it's a great image. I was flattered by American Airlines called me and asked me to write a letter in their behalf to whoever the authorities are. They were trying to get nonstop service to Shanghai out of Dulles. And I said, well, why would you ask me? They said, well, we think you're important and because of WMAL and your name. And I Good did. Influencer. I wrote a letter to somebody yeah. at American Airlines. I was flattered by it. I don't know whether they got the service or not, but they got a nonstop to China now. They do. They're all in competition. United Airlines will fly it uh, about a couple of days after Labor Day weekend. And go first class. I, I took Janice. <laughs> Remember, took I work with the Board to, of Trade, so I'm trying to be respectful of the funds. But we'll have a good flight. <laughs> no, we went to Hong Kong, uh, won a charity contest, and went to Hong Kong first class. Wow, oh, eighteen hours. That's the we way to travel. One of the travel. great trips of our life. <laughs> but Jim, what what do you think about the uh, 
the future of the uh, of the board and uh, all the things you're involved with, like leadership. I got involved in leadership or in, uh, as a founder, and we put so many people together with other people. I think that organization is incredible. Well, I think that the the Greater Washington Board of Trade um, works hard in support of the Board other of Trade made it happen. Well, but I mean, in terms of the great work that Junior Achievement does, or Leadership Greater Washington, or working in support of United Way or Goodwill, th this is the fabric of the community, and it's not run by the Board of Trade. It's not even all created by the Board of Trade. But but many years back, we were maybe the spark, maybe the kindling on some of them. But they've done remarkably well, and, and you know, use Junior Achievement. We uh, we participate with Washingtonian with the big Business Hall of Fame event each year. Ed Grenier and his team have done a remarkable job of helping thousands and thousands and thousands of kids it's become incredible. more financially literate. And that's one of the more critical <laughs> issues this country faces. Well, you, the Board of Trade was very instrumental in the Kennedy Center and all that down in that area through the gas company and people like that. The Board of Trade was very involved with the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. Your Bob Grow was one of the spark plugs That's to right. get that thing done. Well, and the inner county connector. And, oh, my and God. again and again and again, we'll continue to push for the Purple Line as the link that brings Prince George's County and Montgomery County together. But it is, in many respects, the Silver Line of Maryland. But we worked hard in support of Metro's Silver Line. And now we're working hard in support to make sure that Metro gets the funding it needs, the focus on safety. Paul Wiedefeld and his team are doing a great job. But I agree with it's, you. It's not sexy. It's not... Uh, it's not of high interest, but it's in certainly so important that it has to be done. Well, we, we wish we had the editorial voice to tell people to back off. If we don't repair this railroad, it's going to go away. I mean, this metro. It'll disappear. So what he has done, I, I share with him, I think you might have to shut it down even more to get it fixed. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's got the right plan. He's got the right people. He's got confidence in the people. And Patience. he's shaking out the ones. Patience. He's not very patient, but he needs some time and he needs some money. People ask me, what's the plan B? There isn't a plan B. What are you going to make it? Rails to trails? It's not. You've got a metro system. Feed the beast. Let's get it going. Let's make sure it's safe and dependable because the workforce is dependent on Metro and the employers, that greater Washington business community, is dependent upon the workforce. I, I just think it's, it's, a, it's not a Band-Aid, it's a whole enchilada. We've got to have Metro. And we got to have it workable, well, and that's what he's working on. I mean, on. you remember, it was it was not that long ago that friends and family would come in from all over the country. You'd take them into Metro to take the pictures and brag on the place. <laughs> it was what? a crown jewel. It still is. It's got some tarnish. needs to be fixed up. I don't know if it ever gets restored to the level of grandeur that we would brag on it as a world-class place, but I'm over in Rome, and graffiti was everywhere in oh, rome if we're looking country. to be if we're looking to be a decrepit system then don't fund it but the greater washington board of trade the council of governments and others are working hard in support of metro to make sure that we continue to feed this jewel so that we get stronger and stronger jim i can't believe everything that's happened i grew up here i love it i never left with third generation and people say why are you stuck in this city because i love it and i know you love it and it shows and you're a great president of the Board of Trade. I've been a member since like 1959 or 60. Oof. I was a, a gopher for guys, you know, get them applications. <laughs> and I think what you have done to Board of Trade and what you've done for the city is incredible. And I wish you many, many more years. Don't leave here, Denegar. You haven't finished your job yet. Well, I, I, uh, I appreciate it, Andy. I will say that in many respects, you're the soul of the community and you continue to give back. You continue to knit people together. You continue to, to get them together. I think this with you and Janice on this type of a podcast and not only reflect on what this place used to be, but what it could be. I think that's the, that's the, the heart and soul of our town. And in many respects, you're it. Janice has written a, a bog on what's past his prologue. And we believe that. And that's why we're doing that. Jim, thank you so much. And and I can't tell you enough that what you've done, and you're a wonderful example of a man that really cares about his hometown. Thank you, Andy. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.